There's a saying in Yorkshire that apple pie without cheese is like a kiss without a squeeze. So I went to Wensleydale, the home of Yorkshire cheese, to find a perfect flavour for my apple and cheese pie. This is Hawes, deep in the Yorkshire Dales, and home to one of Britain's best-loved cheeses. David Hartley runs Wensleydale Creamery, where they make traditional Wensleydale cheese, of course. Wensleydale has been made in this valley for generations, but since 1897, the Hawes Commercial Creamery has been churning it out by the bucket load. And it's proved so popular, they've been experimenting with a mix of flavours that might give traditional cheese enthusiasts nightmares. Here we go, this is what I've been here for. There's so many cheeses to choose from. I guess I'll have to try them all. This is all about Wensleydale with a combination of multi flavours. Whether you're looking at ginger, cranberries, apricot, pineapple, this is going to be interesting. We're going to start with the basic one first. Wow. It's a classic Wensleydale, it's crumbly. It's got a lovely flavour, though, inherent flavour, and you're left with that classic crumbly cheese flavour left on your tongue. It's delicious, it really is. Classic Wensleydale is already a tried and tested recipe, but what about the more unusual variations? Ginger. I'm not sure about this before. I can smell it before I've even eaten it. The texture's bang on with this cheese. That ginger overwhelms the total flavour of the cheese. It brings something to the table, but for me, you might as well just have some caramelised ginger. So, no to that one. It's too strong for me. It's a no from me on the ginger, but how about the Christmas classic, cranberry? Nah. First thing you taste is the cheese. Then the texture of the cranberries comes in. I also know for a fact that's their best seller. Now, that makes perfect sense to me. Looking at the combination of flavours between the two and textures, that one went hands, hands down ahead of that ginger one. But there's a few more to go yet. That pineapple one's too sweet for me. And I think it breaks down the cheese far too much. It is like that classic pineapple and cheese on a stick. This one's interesting, lemon. Wensleydale with lemon. That just tastes like cheesecake. You just need a digestive biscuit underneath it, and there you go, a cheese it, which is maybe not a bad thing, but not for me with the cheese. Next up, the garlic and chive. Surely that's a winner. Far too garlicky. I don't like that at all. I can't taste the cheese at all. Garlic just overwhelms everything. The last one isn't Wensleydale, but I can't resist the taste. Hot and spicy cheddar. I mean, look at the size of the chilies in there. I mean, that's chilies with cheese. That's not cheese with chilies. There's one thing that springs to mind of what I'd use that for on nachos. It is a cheddar, so you could put it in between the nachos, you get that little bit of heat to go with your nachos, a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of salsa, that would work really well. But not too much of it, because that's quite strong. I think it's got a bit of chili stuck in my throat. I need to go get some water. Wow. I've chomped my way through some of the more novelty cheese choices, but none of them have really tickled my fancy. Complete with a fetching red hat, I track down the boss, David, who's rustling up the most popular export, Wensleydale with cranberry. I smell a bestseller. The traditional cheese is blended down into crumbs, and then fresh or dry cranberries are added. The cranberries that we use come from America, and one of our biggest export markets is when to have a cranberry back in America, which is great. When did you start adding, you know, ingredients to your cheese? I mean, were you not happy with your cheese for some reason? We were, yeah, we were very happy with the cheese that we made, but Wentzadale is a comparatively small part of the overall cheese market. And when we started up, which was back in 92, by the mid-90s, there was a growing market for cheese with fruit blends, primarily, and uh, Wentzadale and Apricot was one of the early cheeses, but we then invented Wentzadale and Cranberry. But Wentzadale, because it's a creamy, milky cheese, it does lend itself to those sort of sweeter, fruitier blends, and it's just a huge part of what we do now. It's about 30% of our business, but it's our best-selling export line as well. I can't believe that one, just under one in three cheeses sold, has got cranberries inside it. That, for me, proves the point that flavour combinations work, as long as you get those combinations absolutely spot on. 
Some of the world's tastiest dishes challenge your taste buds with unusual flavour combinations. And although combining apple and Wensleydale may seem like an odd choice, they're actually a match made in heaven. I've decided to use the traditional Wensleydale for my apple pie, and if it succeeds like the Wensleydale and cranberry combo, I'll be on to a winner. So I'm armed with the country's finest crumbly cheese, and I'm also joined by Yorkshire lasses Liz and Sue, who've lived in Wensleydale all their lives. To celebrate this champion of British cheeses, I'm going to bake them an apple and Wensleydale pie. Liz, Sue, welcome to my kitchen. So you're from Wensleydale? Yes. Both of you? Yes. Near Leyburn. I mean, I remember sort of making my way to Wensleydale and that beautiful countryside and single track roads. Yes. It, what a magical place to live. Yeah. So I take it you've eaten a fair amount of Wensleydale then? Yes, yes, yes. And, and normally eat Wensleydale rather than any other cheese. Over the years, obviously, um, Wensleydale cheese has, has, has changed. They've, yeah, they've it's, moved, it's they've modernised, and they've created some, I mean, fantastic blends of yeah, cheese. Yeah. yeah. The dairy have done an awful lot for employment in the Dale. Mm. They've saved this, mm. you know, the buyout, they saved the, che the creamery, the dairy as we would call it. Mm. And without it, Upper Dale, Upper the Dale round Hawes would be in big trouble. Mm. Now, we've got a selection of cheeses here from Wednesday Dale. And it, it almost shows the sort of movement from cheese from the original, yeah. from your family sort of supplying the milk, mm. getting all the milk to the original dairy, mm. into the, the sort of modern take on Wednesday Dale. Um, this is the original Wensleydale. I mean, what do you think about this original Wensleydale? I mean, is it still something you eat often? Yes, my favourite. Is it your favourite? Yes, yes. My favourite and my friend's favourite on Christmas Eve with Christmas cake. What, Wensleydale? Wensleydale yes. cheese with Christmas yes. cake. It's wonderful. OK. <laughs> you see, I think it tastes like... Cos I'm, I'm a lad from Cheshire. Yeah. Right. It does taste like Cheshire a little bit. Yes. It's crumbly. Yeah. It's got lots of flavour. Yeah. Now, this is a cranberry one. What do you think of the cranberry one? Yeah, I like both the fruit. I like the apricot one as well. The apricot one, which yeah. is this one. Yeah. I mean, do you not feel, um, as a business, it, it's one step too far out in this stuff? Or is it something which you think the Wensleydale is so precious, but you think, OK, fine. As long as they keep the Wensleydale, traditional Wensleydale yeah. there. I do like the original Wensleydale, in fact, so much that I'm going to use it in my recipe. Right. So what I'm going to make is an apple and Wensleydale pie. It had better be good. These ladies know their Wensleydale. I'm going to have to make a cracking pie. I've made a sweet shortcrust pastry for this pie using butter and flour, sugar and a pinch of salt. Use cold butter to get a firm breadcrumb texture before adding water to bind the pastry. Now I need to split this into two. One for the lid and one for the base. So you get your Bit of pastry, flatten it down. Little turn for luck. Bet you didn't do that, did you? No. We didn't teach... Did you kill the jars? We didn't do that with the children at school, either. <laughs> what? We both teachers, we both home economics teachers. Oh, are you? Yes. So you passed on... Where? Where? Retired, and pastry was a nightmare. Why? At, well, 22, 30 children making pastry, and it does end up like rubber. Yeah. They, they, they play with it's it. It's difficult to, ha to handle. It's something which you've just got to... You've got to be careful with it, I think. And just gently take it out. Keep it moving. I think keep it moving's the key. I think once you... Once it stays in one place, you have a problem. The steamroller effect. Well, yeah. I think, I think if you keep on moving it, keep a light dust and a flower on it, then it begins to sort of find the right the right shape, because the more that you work with this dough, the more rubberized they get, because what happens is the gluten content begins to bind together. So I'm going to roll it up, get the base ready, just take it right to the edge, and then roll that out. I'm going to coax it into, it into place, push it right down into the bottom, and then drive it up the side. Now, what I've got here is the lining the apples to go inside. Once your tin is lined, skin and roughly chop some cooking apples and some Cox's apples for their sweet, juicy flavour. 
I think the ladies will want a bit of a bite of their pie, so I'm keeping the apple nice and chunky. Now, what I'm going to do is cut up some of this Wednesday dough. I'm going to add some of this cheese to the top. Is it something that you'd like to use? Oh, yes, have it, have it with apples. Yes, apple, but, yes, but not, not in, cooked in the pie. Not cooked in the pie. Now, I'm adding some, a little bit of sugar to that as well, because there's some tartness coming from the, the baking apples. Now, I think that will probably do. Now, this is going to melt inside. So the next thing I want to add is the lid. Now, once you've got that cheese in there, I mean, you'd think it shouldn't work. It shouldn't work. Cheese and apple you'd have on a plate with a, almost like a ploughman's lunch. Yes. Yeah. But baked inside a pie, I'm curious to think now what you're going to say about this pie itself. I roll out a lid with some of the remaining pastry from earlier. Once it's on, push it down onto the base to form a firm seal. Trim off any excess and then crimp the edges. I'm going to take a little bit of pastry. I'm going to try and make a little bit of... a little... a little bit of decoration. Now, first of all, you just need to roll a little bit of pastry out. Just mark it, go round, a bit like a heart. Every baker hates waste, so use the leftover pastry to make your pie look that little bit more special. Don't forget, I've got two Yorkshire lasses to impress. Go in a bit, out, get rid of that. It looks a bit like a heart at the moment. Get a little bit for the top. Then use some egg wash on it, which I've got here. Brush the top with egg all the way along. You can enrich this egg wash by putting an extra yolk in it, make it very, very yellow. Get your little apple, stick it on the corner. A little bit sticking out of there. A little bit of egg wash on top of that. Get some sugar, coat it all over the top. My pie is now ready for the oven, which is preheated to 200 degrees. Bake for 30 minutes until golden brown, or, in my case, take out the one I made earlier. Mm. Look at that. And it smells. It smells so good. You've got that beautiful apple in there. You've got that two types of apple. You've got the cox, you've got the bacon, you've got the two different flavours, and you've got that Wensleydale cheese in there as well, melting with that gorgeous golden pastry. That, for me, is a proper pie. That's an apple and Wensleydale pie. I know what you're thinking. Cheese and apple? But trust me, Yorkshire folk have been eating this for years. I hope Sue and Liz enjoy it later. Ladies, thank you for joining me in the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. But you'll have to wait a little bit longer to try it. Right. Thank you.